Creating a Champion is an absolutely amazing piece of literature, also known as masterworks if you are in the land of the rising sun. If you thought Breath of the Wild lacked story and explanation, well, this book explains quite some stuff the game itself refused to communicate to us directly. It was released to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Zelda series, and focuses solely on Breath of the Wild. It was published on December 15, 2017 in Japan and November 20th, 2018 in the West. Almost a full year later. And who can blame them, just look at the size of it. If you were one of the lucky few to get one of the limited editions, the book came with all kinds of goodies, like a glass replica of a spirit orb, a Calamity Ganon tapestry, additional artwork and or four glass orbs with the Divine Beast symbols on them, just to name a few. Since its release, this book has been a great source of information for Zelda theorists, and its canonicity, unlike other works like Hyrule Astoria, has largely been accepted by fans. It's basically a big compilation of official artwork, concept art, development history, additional lore and interviews with different members of the Zelda team. Though to clarify, the book wasn't written by the Zelda team itself. As you can imagine, they probably had better things to do. The book was compiled by Nintendo Dream, a Japanese gaming magazine akin to Nintendo Power, but still up and running, and localized for English-speaking audiences by Dark Horse Comics. Of course the devs did play a big role in giving shape to the overall book, and I'm sure they were responsible for giving the green light to publish. However, these are still second-hand writings, and with a book this size not to mention possible translation errors, there are bound to be mistakes or at the very least inconsistencies which seem to clash with what we see in-game. This video is focused on the English translation of the book since, well, first of all, I don't read Japanese, and second, this is America. actually I'm European, but the large majority of my audience is from the US, so I'm just gonna pretend like I'm one of you. Uh, go Red Sox? It's a baseball team. What? The Red Sox are a baseball team. Oh. Anyway, most Zelda theories found on YouTube are in English and thus based on that version. So, some mistakes I point out might not apply to the original. Also keep in mind that even if a piece of information contradicts the game, that doesn't automatically mean the book is wrong. Maybe the writers of the game's story simply changed their mind about something and altered it afterwards. Who knows? So, in no particular order, here are 5 mistakes slash inconsistencies in creating a champion. The prophecy is one of the most well-known aspects in regards to the backstory of Breath of the Wild, and one of the first big pieces of expose Link receives from King Rome before being let loose upon Hyrule after the Great Plateau section. A mysterious individual informed the royal family of Ganon's looming return ten years before it actually happened, which set into motion all the events leading up to the Calamity, such as the large-scale excavations to find the ancient Sheikah relics, Zelda's training and other preparations to deal with Ganon. The identity of this mystery person, only referred to as the fortune teller, is never revealed, as according to creating a champion, all records of this person were lost. The book also states that whoever this individual was, he or she must have been a trusted aide or a high-ranking official since the king took the prediction very seriously. However, seemingly out of nowhere, the book also suggests that the fortune teller might have been the Queen of Hyrule, who died shortly after the prophecy came to be. This suggestion clashes with the information we are presented in the game itself. The fortune teller is never referred to directly in cutscenes, but there are two instances where this prophet is mentioned, that being in Zelda's diary and King Rome's journal. In both cases, the wording doesn't indicate that this person was the Queen. On the contrary, it seems to point in the opposite being true. Here are the two parts which mention the fortune teller. Notice how in both instances the two refer to this person as simply the fortune teller. Not only that, but King Rome actually mentions the queen just one page later, stating, My queen has left this world. Remember, these are private diaries meant for only their eyes to see. There is no way that King Rome would refer to his own wife in such a way, only to call her my queen one page later. Neither would Zelda, who was heavily impacted by the death of her mother, refer to her in such a casual manner. If this was supposed to hint at the queen being the fortune teller, then the game did a terrible job at it. Or as I suspect, I think the writer of this section of the book may have taken some creative liberty and inserted his or her own suggestion. Which, as I just demonstrated, the evidence seems to debunk, making it almost feel like a red herring. I don't believe that to be the case, but I do think that whoever wrote this down might have not considered the evidence against it. This is something I picked up on while I was doing research for my Calamity video. 
creating a champion states that the Lanayru Promenade, also known as the Spider's Nest, was destroyed during the Great Calamity. This area is actually where this cutscene takes place, where the champions in Zelda first discover Ganon's return. And indeed, when we visit this location in-game, we can see that the place is devastated. But they forgot to add this location in several maps which show all the affected areas which were impacted by the Guardians. There are several instances of this map being used. In particular, this one which shows the defense of Akala Citadel and Fort Ateno, Princess Zelda's journey, and this map which shows the evacuation routes during the event. Notice how in all instances the promenade is not highlighted in red. This is probably just a simple oversight by whoever made this map, but still a pretty significant one since all the other affected areas are spot on. Lake Illumini is a small and shallow lake located in the west of the map and north of the Gerudo Highlands, right at the foot of this massive mountain range. It's surrounded by trees and vegetation, almost like a little oasis. Several wooden houses can be found here, indicating that this was a small secluded settlement. The houses themselves are of the exact same type as the ones we find in other Hylian settlements across the map, such as Kaponga Village and Dea Village. This little settlement is completely absent from the book. It's not listed amongst destroyed settlements and never even referred to anywhere. Now you might say, well, it was probably not significant enough to be named, which is fair. However, However, not only is it not named, it's also absent from this map, which shows all the locations the Hylians used to inhabit before the Calamity. This map is very precise, listing other nameless settlements and even the smallest singular buildings we can find. So why was Lake Illumini completely forgotten about? Another argument could be that Lake Illumini was already abandoned before the Great Calamity, but this too doesn't really add up. First off, the buildings are in the same state of decay as all the other villages, and the damage to the houses also matches that of the Guardian's ferociousness. Secondly, this area was actually within the affected area. The maps I showed you before are incomplete and only show a fraction of the total map. But there is a complete version to be found right above the evacuation map. It's very small, but as you can see, the settlement was indeed inside the radius of the Guardian's destruction. Poor Lake Illumini. Not only were they living far away from any living soul, isolated from the rest of the world with no help coming, but even creating a champion completely forgot about their existence. It is time for the Zonai, our favorite unknown mystery tribe. As you know, the game itself barely reveals anything about them aside from the name of their most prominent ruins and the barbarian armor set. But here comes creating a champion to the rescue. Although the book doesn't reveal much about their actual identity, it does elaborate on a few things about their architecture, their traits and symbols, and where the idea of including them came from in the first place. Additionally, on one of the very last pages, right before the closing words, we find this map of Ruins of Times Unknown. Here we find various different ruins highlighted in either green or yellow, green being marked as Zonai ruins and yellow as ancient Hylian ruins. At first glance everything seems to be in order. We got the Zonai ruins themselves, Thundra Plateau, Typhlo ruins and the Lome Labyrinths which may or may not be of Zonai origin as well, though that one is up for debate. There are, however, a total of four locations which are just flat out mistakes. They are very small and thus easily overlooked two in Akala, one in Upland Zorana, and one just south of Rideau Village. When we actually visit these places, it immediately becomes obvious that these are not Zonai ruins. The architecture doesn't match that of the others. They are, in fact, ancient Hylian ruins. And this one in Upland Zorana isn't even ancient Hylian, but modern Hylian, as it is identical to that of the other garrisons found across Hyrule. The reason we know these are ancient Hylian and not Zonai is because there are two other sites which have architecture matching that of these mistaken Zonai ruins, namely the ones in Tor in wetland and more prominently the ancient columns. As you can see, there's no mistaking that these are identical to the others. And in the case of this one close to Rist Peninsula, there's actually another similar ruin located right down the hill. And that one is actually marked as an ancient Hylian ruin. Weird.
On the day of the Great Calamity, one of the small victories that took place besides Zelda sacrificing herself to seal Ganon was the miracle at Fort Hateno. This too was Zelda's doing, and combined with the effort of Link and the fort's militia, the Guardians were stopped in their tracks, preventing them access to East Nakluda, which kept Hateno Village out of harm's way. If you want to know more about this event, check out Zeltic's video about that one, as I don't have time to explain it in detail. If we are to believe what is told to us both in-game and from creating a champion, the Guardians never entered East Nakluda because of this valiant effort. And again, the map I showed you before, which shows all the affected areas, indeed shows that the Guardians never made it past Fort Hateno. But then, how do we explain this? There's a total of two modern Hylian ruins found beyond the Fort Hateno border. And similar to Lake Illumini, these show signs of the same type of destruction as all the other modern Hylian ruins. In fact, we find several identical ruins right in front of Fort Hateno on the deserted battlefield. Now again, you might say, maybe these were abandoned and destroyed before the Calamity. But then, why are they highlighted on this map, which shows the locations the Hylians inhabited right before the Great Calamity? This clearly indicates that they were occupied before the disaster took place. In this case, there's two possibilities to explain this mistake. Either the book is wrong and some Guardians did still manage to get through after Zelda and Link left the battlefield, or before they arrived, which is possible. But then again, there are no destroyed or live Guardians found anywhere in the fields of East Nakluda. Or the game is wrong and the world designer simply made a mistake by putting these ruins here. Or maybe I'm wrong and there's a plausible explanation for these ruins. This picture of Link. No real reason, I just think it was a mistake to include it. Get it away from me. Thanks a lot for watching guys, let me know in the comments what you think about these mistakes and inconsistencies. Perhaps, like I said before, I'm the one who made a mistake and falsely accused this poor book. Be sure to let me know. As always, a huge thanks to all of my Patreons and to Kurutama, who is my newest addition to this list of amazing supporters. I will see you all next week. This is Don signing off and have a good one.